What's up guys, DK here with Collector's Impact, and today we are going to have a quick discussion about rejected cards from PSA and other grading services. So this is something that I've seen in several reveal videos recently, as well as experienced myself with <laughs> some recent submissions to PSA right here. Uh, and I wanted to go ahead and discuss this topic as... I didn't know very much about it when I sent in the cards over a year ago, or around a year ago. Um, I'm kind of new to the grading scene in terms of submitting stuff myself, though I have dealt with graded cards for many years. I just never actually sent any in myself. Uh, when I managed a card shop, we used to either buy them already graded in bulk from vendors, or the owner would send in uh, his own sports cards. We never did like Pokemon card grading at the shop that I used to work at, which I mean, primarily it was a sports and memorabilia, sports card and memorabilia store, but we did have a gaming component. As far as submitting cards myself, I have been learning quite a lot over this last year, a year and a half. And one of the things that, you know, has come up is are rejected cards. So I've gone ahead and made a list of the four most common reasons that your card could potentially get rejected by PSA or other grading card services. Now, a little caveat, some of the services will actually slab your card even if it meets some of these requirements. Uh, Beckett is one that primarily does that. They slab cards even if PSA would reject them, but they put the little stipulation of, uh, it has a different label and they put like what the deal is with it. Um, yeah, they don't always do that, but for certain things. So I'm still not completely up to speed in terms of where they draw the line, but I know that Beckett will encase things that PSA simply won't. So with that in mind, I'm primarily talking about PSA as they are number one in the space. Currently, they're shut down. Everyone knows this, but they're going to be opening up very soon. Hopefully, 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 based on the notifications that they've been putting out and the progress reports they've been doing, seems to be going pretty well. So we're hoping that they stick with that June, you know, end of June or July time frame. So <laughs> anyway, enough rambling. Let's jump into the four reasons that cards get rejected by PSA. Number one, since I have an example right here on hand, is if the card has been recolored. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, unfortunately, when I traded somebody for this card many years ago, now this was when I was young, I mean, I was a kid, uh, or a very young teen, uh, something like that, when I got this first edition Blastoise. Uh, it is part of my original collection, but the person that I traded it with you will see they nicked the back of the card in two places. And instead of just leaving the white paper that's ripped, um, you know, how they nicked it, they took a blue Sharpie marker and boot, and boot, and put it there. So, yeah, they kind of did. That was more of a restoration approach, which is heavily frowned upon when it comes to a graded card. Now, in terms of the actual card and its value, in the community for collectors, that is pretty, it's on the fence, right? Because it is a genuine first edition Blastoise from base set. Overall, the card is beautiful. I mean, uh, it's it's played and everything, but not, it. this destroys it, obviously. But for a collector of raw cards, for the right collector, it could still be desirable. And it is first edition, so it doesn't lose all value in a case like this, but for great ability, it becomes a non-original, uh, you know, it's non-original because it's been touched up. So if you have any cards that have any sort of markers or pens or anything like that done to them, then it's considered recolored and it will not be slabbed. It will be rejected and sent back to you like this one was to me. And I had to pay the fee <laughs> because they produced the label. So that really, that, that really sucks. So, yeah. <laughs> Just a little word, word of the wise there for you guys. Um, a common thing that people will do in Magic the Gathering cards especially, uh, that's more on the shady side when it comes to the recoloring approach, is <clears throat> they will take a beta card. This one is beta CE, and this will come up later. But they will take a... Um, an unlimited or revised card, now that's the ultimate dumb thing you can do because revised has a different um, <laughs> color 
uh, palette or whatever than Unlimited anyway. But Unlimited and Beta are very similar, so they'll try to get very sophisticated with it and <laughs> and color the white border black, which if you have Beta, it's worth way more than Unlimited, and they're pretty much the same kind of card. So if it's black border, the, the value goes up, up, up. So there's a lot of scammer-type people out there that will try to turn an Unlimited into a Beta, and PSA is going to catch that with their tests, and they will not slab that junk. <laughs> All right, number two is the most common one when it comes to sports cards, which is trimming of the card. So this one here is my my famous little Zion Williamson card, which, goodness gracious, this card has been doing all kinds of stuff in, in regard to uh, Zion Williamson's uh, stuff this season, but I won't get into that. But w <laughs> the, the problem that uh, some sports card collectors run into is uh, it's kind of messed up in a lot of ways. PSA has these like measuring tools where they measure the sports card, and then they try to determine if it's the actual authentic size that the card came in out of a booster pack or out of a, a wax pack in, uh, in sports, out of a wax pack, and if they determine with their little tests that it, it's not the correct size, then they label it as uh, cut, as cut corners or resized or um, trimmed or whatever terminology they like to use. But what this basically means is they don't believe that it's authentically like pack like from the booster pack from the wax pack they think that somebody came in with a pair of scissors and a or a paper cutter and the reason that people would try something shady like that is because if there's any sort of edge wear or any sort of markings at the edge of an older this is mostly a thing that happens with vintage cards of course um, any sort of ding or edge wear, they they might try to get really crafty and really close and sh sh shave off the the damaged part of the card, <laughs> at a, at like a hairline shave, and try to make the borders crisp and minty, and it, it it doesn't work, you guys. So just know that 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 tactic does not work. PSA's equipment and testing. Uh, procedures are evolving all the time they can definitely detect it and it's gotten to the point now where they reject cards that have not been trimmed or cut uh, by the by the user by the owner of the card they just um, they were probably like misprinted in the factory or maybe a miscut card from the factory and they won't even grade it because it doesn't fall within their parameters and that's actually really sad when you see that happen it's kind of a that's a letdown they should really improve their testing capabilities for that particular reason that they reject a card. So that's a double-edged sword kind of a thing, right? So the third and most obvious reason that a card would get rejected is that it is fake. <laughs> so uh, fortunately, I guess for us, I don't have a fake card to like put in front of the camera. I guess I should get one at some point. If I see one in my travels or my, uh, you know, messing with this stuff, I will pick it up next time and actually keep it. I usually rip up fake cards and throw them away. It was a thing that I did for years when I managed the card shop. When somebody would come in with one, if they were willing to leave it with me because they knew that it was fake, then I would just destroy it um, so that it wouldn't fool anybody else. But yeah, that's that's definitely a pretty key reason. And speaking of that, shameless plug, I did do two videos already on this channel of how to tell if a magic card is real and if a Pokemon card is real or not. Um, they're both decently lengthy videos. I want to say they're like 20 minutes each and they have everything that you would ever need to know in terms of determining if your card is real or not. And the fourth and final reason that PSA will reject a card and not slab it is any sort of shady practices that have been done to the card for alteration. Now we've covered some alterations already, things like uh, recoloring borders, and trimming cards, but there's an even more sinister type of one that's that's a bit that you need to watch out for. So right here, this is a beta collector's edition. As you see here, this is a collector's edition uh, forest. Basically, for this particular series, uh, Wizards of the Coast released the entire beta set with these squared corners and gold borders on the back. 
So what some shady people will do is since this is, you know, beta, the original first set, alpha and beta were the first set. They're, they're pretty much the same set minus like two cards. Um, <clears throat> what they would do is they would take a collector's edition, Black Lotus or Mox or any other really rare card from the set. And they would use some tactics to actually separate the top layer of the card very carefully. Um, they, you know, they take great care to do it. And they would separate the top layer of the card and then get a real beta, like a forest or something like that. And they would um, peel the front end off of that card using whatever methods they use. And then stick the cards, stick the Black Lotus front from the collector's edition onto the beta card and seal it up with glue and whatnot. And do this very painstakingly to try to get it to be a real Black Lotus, essentially. Because this is a real card made by Wizards of the Coast. It's real. Um, so they would try to combine two cards into one and essentially turn a uh, $4,000 card into a $20,000 card and then send it to PSA to try to get it graded and authenticated and slabbed because that would, you know, seal the deal in a sense for being able to sell it. And PSA will catch that, you guys. They will catch that. And um, it's it's just such a an interesting thing that people try to do. So rest assured that if you're trying to actually buy a Beta Black Lotus, <laughs> there's it's like a 99.999999% chance that it is going to be genuine if it is genuinely graded by PSA. So those are the four ways that a card will get rejected. And I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, give the video a like. I really appreciate it. And also subscribe to the channel for more content like this, as well as um, other collectibles, discussions, market discussions, and just fun videos like pack openings and things of that nature. So thank you very much for coming by. And if you are already subscribed to the channel, a huge special shout out to you guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for coming back and checking out the video. And I hope to see you guys next time. Take care.